So before we get into the topic of the video today, which is going to be on these wonderful chest rigs here, I do want to go over something of critical importance, and that's C21 and Airsoft in Canada, or ASIC. Now, Airsoft in Canada, or ASIC for short, is our player advocacy organization in terms of the politics of Airsoft. And C21 is a proposed bill that is being currently worked through in government right now that seeks to basically reclassify a bunch of Airsoft guns, and most Airsoft guns, into prohibited devices. I don't want to get too much into the woodwork of that because it requires a lot of explanation. Uh, but basically what that means is that a lot of stuff that you currently own and that are in your stores right now are going to be prohibited devices, which means they can't be transported, sold, traded, or even used. Uh, if you want to look up the laws around prohibited devices in Canada, feel free to check that out um, and check out the rulings around C21 as well. Now, some literature says that you can still use your stuff, but if it's considered a prohibited device, then I'm not really sure how that's going to work out. Uh, there is a lot of kind of guesswork there. There's a lot of stuff that we're not really sure how it's going to be enforced. But what C21 basically means is that the landscape of airsoft within our country is going to be changed forever and for the worse. If a lot of this stuff is reclassified as prohibited devices, retailers obviously don't want to have any illegal inventory, so they're not going to be able to bring it in. And currently the CBSA is already stopping the import of a lot of your favorite airsoft stuff. And that's happening behind the scenes without the laws even changing. So before you say, well, you know, it might still be okay or whatever, it's already starting now. That's why you see a lot of stuff out of stock, retailers are not restocking in your stores, and the stuff obviously going up in price because of the greater import fees due to inflation and the circumstances regarding those new kind of rulings and those new interpretations. And for you guys, it might just be a hobby, but for me and my other friends in the industry, it's our livelihoods and our jobs. You know, this place isn't run by charity or by donations and stuff like that. It's run by customers and our wonderful community. Um, obviously, if, you know, these things, you can't use them anymore, then it doesn't really bode well for most airsoft facilities and fields as well, including me and content creators around the airsoft sphere making wonderful videos for you guys. So it means a lot to me if you check out their website. They have a guide on how to write your MP. They have a guide on how to contact them and what to do now as it is a critical period. They're trying to basically push it forward before Thanksgiving in Canada, which is the second weekend of October. So please, 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 before we get into this video here, send them a letter, contact them, reach out, have them meet up with you at your local field even. We've contacted them for that. Uh, we're still waiting to hear back on that. But let them know, even if they send you a can response that we are unified, they are actually hurting people here and their hobby, their livelihoods. It's super important. And uh, I really appreciate if you guys can do that. Take the time out of your day not to look at airsoft stuff, not to buy your favorite gun, not to do whatever stuff you do. Uh, it takes like all of 10 minutes just to write them a simple letter. There even is like a template and a guide on uh, ASIC's website that you can look at. Please, please, please uh, do that for me. Do that for the community. Do that for our sport and our hobby that we love. It'll mean a lot to us here. And we really appreciate you guys. Now that that's out of the way, although it's never really out of the way as it pertains to what I do and uh, my job, uh, but now that that's out of the way, for the purpose of this video, we're going to be talking about chai comps. Now what is a chai comp? For those of you wondering, it's basically this thing that I'm wearing here, including some examples I have in front of me of these newer chai comps. Now these are basically the granddaddy of all modern chest rigs. A lot of people consider it the first modern chest rig to be created for military use, uh, and it's made by the Chinese. Uh, so, you know, shout out to the motherland over there. It's made by them right after the Civil War and World War II as a piece of load bearing kit. And these have seen conflict throughout the world pretty much everywhere because they're so mass produced, they're super easy to make, and they're just sent everywhere. They've been used by a lot of militaries, including the US and other NATO factions for more covert operations where they're trying to blend in with insurgents like the CIA. And they're quite battle tested, which can't be said about a lot of airsoft rigs out there. It's not really a review today, but I do want to go over why I think every player should own one. And first off, like I said, over there is going to be the kind of cool history behind it. So this is one of the first chess rigs and it has evolved over time. For example, this over here is a South African rig, but as you can see, even though it's really cool and I do really love this thing, it's, it's quite an awesome piece. Um, it is basically the same thing. One layer of pouches, although these are double pouches over here, a backer and you know some stuff on the side and of course straps on the back. Going forward, another generation over here is going to be, I, I really don't like this rig, I think it represents a lot of bad things, but it has been battle tested too, it's going to be these huge eagle style rigs, pouches in the front, straps in the back, X style, 
uh, and stuff like that. These are quite modular. They have a lot of molly on them. But again, based on the Chicom in a lot of ways. And of course, going into the 21st century and modern age, this is my own Milsim rig. This is a combination built up of a lot of things. If you want to see a review on this or a rundown of this later, please comment below. But even this, right? Backer, wings on the side, mag pouches in the front. This one has an H harness, which is a bit more of a modern design, but still basically a Chicom with more attachments. So budgeting, and I want to talk about that for a bit before we get into the Chicom itself and why I think the Chicom is an important thing. Airsoft is an expensive hobby. While it may look like this, there it, is. it can often cost as much as something like this. And that includes gear, not just your guns and not just your attachments and all that stuff. Of course, that stuff costs a lot too. And we're not even talking about the fancy gear like night vision and thermal scopes and whatever. It can be pretty expensive. And nowadays, especially with inflation and things going on, um, stuff costs a lot and the hobby that you play in might not take financial priority over a lot of other things. So this Chacom over here costs maybe about $40, $30, some of that shipped from eBay or from other surplus websites. Now for you American viewers out there, it's probably a lot cheaper than that, but it's not very expensive considering it's basically all you need to play here at Siege. As a converse example, this is a modern chest rig. This is kitted out with a bunch of custom stuff and it's based on a, a Spiritus thing too. This costs hundreds of dollars and this does basically the exact same thing as this cheapo Chicom. Uh, I don't want to obviously judge anybody's financial situation, nor am I a financial advisor, go to your local bank for that or something like that. Uh, but I do understand that airsoft can cost a lot and the cost does stack up. We obviously want you guys to have nice stuff and you know, part of the hobby is collecting and owning things, but mostly the hobby is about playing the sport of airsoft itself, going on the field, having a good time, meeting like-minded people, creating community, and all that good stuff just like any other sport out there. This thing basically holds just enough mags for me to go through in a 20 minute skirmish, probably a lot more than I actually need since you know mid caps hold 100 rounds each. Um, and it doesn't really carry too much more than that. I don't really need a radio when I'm playing at Siege for the most part, don't really need anything else. Maybe like you wanna put a spare battery in one of these pouches or you wanna put a spare battery in your pocket, that's totally fine. But other than that, not much else you really need. Not every space of molly needs to be filled, not every patch needs to be put on a piece of Velcro, and not every piece of Picatinny needs to be filled with an attachment. And obviously this Chicom is a great example. You don't need too much to play uh, skirmish games here. Now this old kit obviously is not without its limitations considering this thing is probably older than most people's dads. So it was obviously designed for AK mags in mind. This is an AK mag and the Chinese used to use Type 56s. So if you put an AK mag in here, it fits like a glove, no problem. And you can use these loops to cover it if you really want to. However, if you are more of an AR user or using any other kind of different magazines because the pouches are so big they can fit AR mags. I've even seen people squeeze two in there so you can have six mags in this three mag pattern rig uh, but they do fit AR mags. The problem is they do fit kind of deep and they're hard to get out. What I recommend doing if you get a Chicom is to put a piece of cardboard at the bottom as you can see I have this little shim down here and it pushes the mag up enough where it won't come out like all the way like it's like this but it goes in deep and if you want to grab it you can just thumb it and get it out no problem. You might have also noticed that these button enclosures are also pretty outdated. They're kind of these wooden toggles over here and they go over like that. They're kind of funny, they're pretty cool. They're kind of cute in a way with like a bead. But what I tend to do is I just tuck that lip down as you do on a lot of pouches. And now you basically have an open top mag pouch, which I love. And you can just tuck this mag in like this. And the mag pouches are so deep, even with the spacer, the AK mag fits in. You don't really worry about it falling out unless you go inverted, which doesn't really happen in airsoft anyways. So they fit in pretty nice and they're not too bad to re-index. Now to demo a reload with this rig, it's not too bad actually. I have my AK over here, which this rig was obviously designed for. And you just pull the mag out like this. You have it in your hand, reload, put the mag back in. And honestly, it's not too bad at all once you kind of learn how to re-index the pouches and stuff like that. Because these are so cheap and readily available and they're not really super collectible, they're kind of like something that you have uh, that has kind of a collectible value to it, but it's really easy to get more. A lot of people use them to do mods and I have two of my friends here and one that I was carrying earlier that have modded their rigs out pretty extensively. So if you have a little bit of knack with a sewing machine or you want to learn, this is a great base platform to do that with. This is a four mag pattern rig as you can see here and my friend modded this with some molly on the side so he cut off these middle little small pouches which aren't super useful. Maybe you can put like a TQ in there or something like that but they're not super useful. They're designed for like old school grenades and stuff like that. Um, and he just made a molly attachment on the side, basically turning it into like a spirit assistance thing too. Another thing that he did was he put an S-TAC Q 
Kiwi insert inside, which is a Kydex mag insert with a spacer at the bottom. Now the mag inserts, they open up quite wide, so they're just basically held on with the tension of the pouch itself. And this allows for basically a very modern, quick draw AR mag pouch, or this also works for AKs, like it was designed to. No problem like that. It retains really well, as you can see here, and gives you a bit of retention. I should probably do that to mine, actually. Additionally, on the back, he sewed some Velcro on the back, so that way you have accommodations for a dangler. So basically what this is, is it's a 56 year old rig with modern attachments and all that stuff. Um, and he put some loop on the strap over here so he can have a radio. Really, really cool mods uh, and just really awesome DIY projects. Now my other friend over here and this rig that I was carrying earlier has similar mods to it, uh, but he cut off both sides over here and he put a taco style pouch over here for one super quick draw mag, increasing the capacity of the rig. And he sewed some molly over here for other attachments in the future. And also he put the Velcro on the back for danglers. One thing that I really like that he did was he put these buckles here. He cut these straps and put these buckles here. And what's nice is it fits these standard one inch kind of ITW buckles. So now he can outfit this with pretty much any modern harness system, including some like really nice cry air light options or something like that. Uh, effectively, again, turning this into basically a modern fighting rig. It's kind of ugly, yeah but it's a really, really cool way to modernize something that's, again, probably older than your dad. So I've probably talked your ear off about this old thing, and when you get one, it's likely gonna smell like mothballs, so please be sure to wash it as mothballs are very bad for you, or uh, something else, something gross. Uh, just clean it before you use it, obviously. And get a Chicom. It's a really great reminder of where all this kit kind of came from. It's a really great reminder of how to be minimal and how to be very Spartan and airsoft. You don't need to spend too much to have a good time. Uh, these aren't too expensive and they're very simple. Um, no matter what you get, just be sure to practice with it. Go out there, go for a run, uh, be fit, stretch before games, please. I see a lot of people injure themselves because they don't stretch before playing, especially indoors. And do all that good stuff. Touch grass, everybody. Um, and we'll see you soon. Take it easy. And uh, somebody's calling now on the phone because they uh, didn't bother to look on the website which has all of our instructions. You know, the funniest thing that uh, I experienced once was somebody asking for the uh, phone number or the address uh, when it's probably the first thing they Google up. So um, don't be that guy, guys. Use Google properly. I'm going to go answer that. <laughs>